people call a digital content creation tool. So uh, we make um, tools for artists, filmmakers, game developers, and it um, you know it's very broad in its approach where we do. Um, you know, the very front end of the modeling work, making, you know, you know, buildings, environments, characters, to um, animating and rigging the characters, so, you know, bringing them to life, uh, adding color to the environments, adding special effects, you know, explosions, rain, whatever, and then uh, rendering it out and, you know, uh, putting it out towards the movies. Maya has a, uh, you know, a wide um, user base, so we'll go anywhere from, you know, individual users, independent filmmakers, um, you know, mom and pop shops in the, you know, you know, advertising or TV space, all the way up to major, um, you know, movie studios, any of the Hollywood blockbusters you see use Maya, as well as, you know, any of the, you know, AAA video games. Yep. Maya started out on Irix, on the SGI, and uh, we ported to Windows, and then to uh, Mac, and then to Linux. So, you know, that's, that was one of the big things is that the team is spending a lot of time uh, developing things for each platform. And so we're, you know, looking for ways to make it uh, easier or more efficient for the team. And so that's, that's how Cute came up. So we started out, um, you know, with one of the engineers starting to do some prototyping and stuff. And then, um, you know, made sure that it was working. And, you know, as people freed up from, you know, the other releases and projects that they were working on, we got them engaged in it, so. And so we've just gotten out Maya 2011 uh, last month in March, and uh, it's, you know, that's the debut of Maya on Qt. We, uh, we're using Qt 4.5.3 for our version. We have a long list of uh, the pieces there, so the Qt Core, Qt Core, Qt GUI, Qt OpenGL, Qt SVG, Qt Test, Qt XML, Qt XML Patterns, Qt Network, and Qt PBus. So, the uh, you know, there's a few other things uh, in in the uh, application that we're looking at for uh, future versions. So, yeah. you know, there, there's more stuff there than what we're using, and yeah. uh, so we see some interesting possibilities there as to ways we can, you know, uh, further push Maya's abilities and you know take advantage of, of what Qt offers. Okay. Yeah, the. Um, you know, I guess the specific things about our uh, industry that Qt helps with is, uh, you know, one of the things is that we have a number of products that we offer for our customers. Um, you know, our, we're responsible for Maya, but we also have a product called Mudbox, which is more around uh, sculpting and painting type of stuff. And we were able to share uh, UI elements that we developed with Maya uh, to Mudbox and vice versa. So uh, it, it does give us some other. Um, development efficiencies that way. Uh, we didn't want engineers, uh, you know, a lot of times they would spend time special casing a widget for each platform, right, because we'd have to rebuild it on each one. Uh, so we didn't think that was an efficient use of time, and uh, so that was, again, a big driving factor there. But some of the other um, benefits or, you know, appeal that we saw there was that, you know, there's a lot of other applications that use Qt as their uh, UI framework. Uh, with, a lot of our customers are using it today for, um, their pipelines, because a big part of the way Maya works is, uh, you know, people will, it's, it's a very open system, so with the API or the SDK, people will augment it, and sometimes we go and visit customers, we don't even recognize it as Maya, they've yeah. customized it so much, but QT, uh, or Q, uh, you know, they've been using it to already customize it, so there's a natural sort of choice there, and being able to uh, use a tool like Qt Designer, uh, is, is very good for them. So, uh, Qt Designer is a drag and drop UI builder. And what we added to Maya was a command called load UI. So, uh, you know, you can just, you know, type in your load UI command, point it to the, the file from Qt Designer, which is an XML based um, description of the UI, and it just loads right up in Maya. So, um, you know, not only are we making it easier for uh, people to do it, um, but, the, you know, that integration is, is there, so it's key. As well, so and people have told us that building UI takes you know can take as much time as building the underlying uh, code or algorithms, if not more. So you know being able to just drag and drop uh, to create things quickly and easily is a big value. One of the things that we'd wanted to do for a while was get to Mac 64-bit support, right? And so when we realized uh, you know the changes that Apple was making with their um, 
you know, process in the system, we realized that there was going to be a lot of effort to do that. And so uh, going to Qt to sort of, you know, equalize it across all platforms got us to 64-bit support on Mac as well, uh, as opposed to if we had done it the way we um, were thinking before we knew about Qt, it would have been probably as much effort to just get the Mac 64-bit support. So we kind of killed, uh, you know, multiple birds with one stone. Yep. Uh, the other thing that we were doing, or we wanted to do, was, you know, Maya is, I guess this is the 11 years now that it's been publicly available. And, uh, you know, so some of the UI, you know, it's, again, started on SGI, so there's a lot of um, sort of old legacy code there. And what we wanted to do was, uh, you know, find a way to, you know, refresh the, the UI and make it more aesthetically pleasing. And, uh, you know, we never wanted to do that just for the sake of doing it, but, you know, getting, you know, the new platform support of Mac 64-bit as well as, you know, uh, improving all the dev infrastructure there, it made the logical uh, choice to do that as well. You know, I mentioned that uh, we had a lot of good feedback from customers who, who are using Qt today, so, um, you know, sort of a good matchup there. We, you know, we always like to uh, listen to our customers and uh, make sure that we're doing stuff that's in sync with, with their needs. Yep. Uh, so that was a good factor for us. Uh, Qt's got a lot of, um, you know, su good support for developers and stuff like that. So we have something called the Autodesk Developer Network where uh, people who are customizing Maya can get in and do that. And uh, the team at Nokia has, you know, offered to be more engaged or, you know, work with our team to uh, educate people on that on how, how Qt works and how they can use it with Maya, so that's a good benefit, um, you know, both for us and our customers. One of the things that the uh, development team found when, uh, you know, porting over some of the code was that, you know, Maya's got a lot of um, specific UI elements that are not um, quite industry standard yet, so, you know, Maya's sort of innovated with a lot of that stuff, so we have things like uh, the hotbox, which is a um, sort of context-sensitive uh, box really listing all the menus yeah. in Maya so, and it'll you know as you're, it'll show up wherever your cursor is. We also have something called marking menus so uh, it's you know gestural drawing to uh, call commands or reuse commands and so it does like a pop-up menu based on where you click down and you can actually draw through it so you start uh, taking advantage of muscle memory so you don't actually have to post um, what the UI is, you can just do these gestural movements and, and call commands. Uh, we also have some uh, differences in the way we do our menus where we have option boxes embedded into the menus, which you know, um, is kind of unique, but you know, it was pretty easy for the dev team to add support for that. It's cute. And beyond that, the, you know, the Maya SDK or API has uh, a lot of hooks in there for building uh, you know, custom widgets and stuff like that. And, um, you know, we, we've tried to do it in a way where, uh, you know, it, it's seamless to the user, so, it, you know, they don't have to know that Maya is using Qt today and wasn't using it last year. So anything they have from last year should work this year. Yep. Uh, so, but, you know, that, that was one of our big drives in importing over to Qt, is to keep that consistency and not disrupt the pipelines. Yeah, yeah so we're, um, you know, we're quite happy with Qt, as I mentioned before. Uh, our customers are, are very happy with it. We've seen some, you know, on some of the forums where we've uh, posted about it, people are saying it's awesome. You know, they can build stuff now in, in 20 minutes versus hours. So, uh, yeah, we definitely recommend Qt to other people.